Hey, Void. Happy 500th review. Now, if you're counting, I've only got 499 videos in my queue because way back in my first month, I did two reviews in one video, but I wanted to keep my count by the review, so there is one that's labeled like two. So technically, this is my 500th review. Did I do something special for it? No, not really. Since I got so far behind in my backlog, I didn't even realize this was coming up until, well, I sat down to record. Oh. And so let's just get in on to that with Hell Knight. 1981 slasher haunted house flick from... that I pulled up on Shudder from uh, my Shudder trek that I've been doing. So, I was curious on this one, as uh, I know it's kind of attained a bit of a cult status for it, and it has Linda Blair in it, so definitely a mark, uh, mark in its favor, and Linda Blair's the best part of the movie. The rest of it, for me, I did end up being a little lacking. It wasn't... I don't know. I guess I was just hoping for something more from it. So, Hell Knight. Uh, it's about uh, a group of uh, four college kids that are pledges to fraternities or sororities that get uh, locked into a mansion that had some atrocities happen years ago, and so they're trying to scare them by putting them in a haunted house. And, of course, their sorority brothers, uh, sorority sisters, frat brothers are pranking them, setting up spooky speakers and shadows to jump out of them, things like that. Well, uh, the story about this, though, was talking about the, uh, was it the Morris brothers, uh, or the family, I think, or something like that. The Gar uh, the Garths. Uh, Morris Garth was one of them. But, uh... Anyway, uh, the Garth family, where one Gar oh, what the where the patriarch had a bunch of deformed children, but so killed them and then himself. But his body vanished. Supposedly, he had another son that was still there. And well, story's true. And now they're being picked off one by one by people who are uh, by these mysterious slashers. Meanwhile, uh, the a lot of the couples, uh, the two couples. Two of them sneak off for sex, the other one sneak off for social commentary. Interesting choice, but, you know, I'm on board for it. So, like I said, Linda Blair's the best thing in this film. She does it really good. The couple that slipped off to just bang, they were weird to watch. I think they're trying to be comic relief, but they more came across as awkward than funny, and... Especially with one of them using a bunch of sur it was like almost a surfer type. It was a little strange. Overall, the, the the gore is good in this movie, and the effects definitely are fine. But it's early '80s, so while the practical effects are definitely appreciated, it's not the greatest. But it is definitely serviceable. Um, for me, I this film really didn't grab me as much as I wanted it to. It it wasn't bad, but it just, I say that a lot of it, but, like, everyone here seemed to be trying, which is more than I could say for some of the movies I watch. This one, for me, Four MacGuffins is really the best I can do on it. It just, nothing really, s I know it's an early one, a uh, slasher, and a fairly iconic one at that for, like, early 80s, but Hell Knight just didn't... I don't know, something about it just didn't grab me. I th think... For this type of, uh, deformed killer sort of thing, I'm more of a funhouse kind of guy, I guess. I mean, I, it does have a bit more style than some of the, some of the Friday the 13th films, but those... Sometimes their lack of style just was part of their charm. This one, I don't know. I don't know. The weird mixture of uh, it being almost a college comedy that just bumped into a horror film was an interesting way of going about it. It did feel almost a Revenge of the Nerds meets a 
House on Haunted Hill, I guess. But something about the formula, it should have worked better than it did. I think the initial ghost story just didn't grab me enough. And if that had been tightened up a little bit, it maybe could have worked a, or a little bit more. Or just gone with a different uh, reason for the killers or have the killer come be not actually the people there, but have been that have been a red herring that could have worked a bit more for me but as it says it's worth watching for linda blair because it's linda blair is always worth watching but beyond that this one's a take it or leave it kind of film it's worth seeing at least once especially since it is an iconic horror film but it didn't really do it for me all right take care boy